All right, so you want to make any spell unlimited. Let's find out how. Before I hop into everything, as always, I use Cheat GUI, Spawn Mod, and Spell Lab. So the wand we have right now is just this little basic wand with a glimmer and an energy orb. This is what it does. But with all these fun things right here, uh, the Greek letters and wand refresh, we can do something real fun. So let's say we want to have unlimited black holes. We used all our black holes, so we don't we we can't fire any anymore. But if we throw an omega on there, whoop! Now we have unlimited black holes. So there's a way to do it with that or alpha. So alpha is a bit tricky uh, since it will cast the first spell. So right now it's going to cast this glimmer. We want it to cast this black hole, so we'll throw the black hole in front of it. And it doesn't even have to be on the first slot, it just has to be the first spell. So we're going to cast unlimited black holes that way. Or gamma, same thing. We're going to throw it right here. Boop. And then we get into Mu. So Mu casts every modifier type, uh, every modifier type spell in the current wand. So what this is going to do is make unlimited Matter Eater. So a way to make sure that the Matter Eater doesn't get used up is we'll throw it at the end, and then. Well, since it's wrapping around, it, it doesn't work that way. But <laughs> it, even if it ran out, it would still have unlimited uh, matter eater. Or if you just no shuffle reset, then uh, it, it, it's unlimited and you don't have to use charges. So there's that. And then something else is wand refresh. So this one is to make sure that if we wanted to not have to uh, swap back to our wand, we could just do something like this. Or, if we had black holes, we could put them at the end, um, or anything like that, and still use, like, uh, gamma and stuff. There's a whole bunch to this. And now we have this wand right here. It is a, a bit more complicated. Um, by that I mean there's a whole lot more stuff on it that doesn't make it all that much more complicated other than the black hole actually has charges now. So you're, you're probably wondering what's going on with all these uh, multicast. So if you were to pair any spell with charges or anything with a wand refresh, it'll have unlimited charges. So how this reads is multicast casting this black hole and it's casting this wand refresh. So we have unlimited black holes. It's extremely neat and doesn't have any like uh, downsides. You can throw as many uh, um, multicast on and you can throw as many spells as you want on. So that it becomes super useful for stuff like this. So normally Circle of Vigor doesn't have a uh, um, unlimited charges, but with this it does. Uh, super, super handy. And like I said, you can throw both on there. Now you have Circle of Vigor and Black Hole. And then, if you wanted to do something else, there's a neat trick with Divides as well. So, it's a little bit weird. And I wish I grabbed my um, my other spells from uh, before, but since we don't have them, that's fine. We'll just use the black hole for, for uh, proof of concept. So normally, this would use uh, charges, but if you put this before the divide spell, it won't use any charges. It's going to use the black holes because uh, it's dividing them, but it won't use anything uh, from the Matter Eater. So if you had Tentacler, Matter Eater, any modifier that has uh, has charges, you could throw it before the Divide By and then it won't use it. Still 10 charges. Still 10 charges. Still 10 charges. Obviously use the Black Hole, but that is something you can do. It does work for all the Divides. Um, 
It will work for the divide by 10, but the divide by 10 has charges on its own, so if you're trying to do this without unlimited spells, then uh, it's just not going to work. And the only thing that doesn't really uh, benefit from the perk is Matter Eater. That's why I use it as an example. But let's hop to the next wand. Alright, so on this wand, we have a Gamma, a Healing Bolt, a Chainsaw, and a Wand Refresh. And then obviously the octuple. It's just eight casts instead of like the normal like fours and stuff. And we also have Matter Eater and Ground to Sand. We don't have unlimited spells, so we're going to make these unlimited by throwing them at the end of our wand. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the very end, it just has to be the very last spell. So something else to note on this wand is that it has a cast delay of one second and a recharge time of one second. So it's actually being fixed by this build right here. And let's use uh, let's use the Matter Eater first because it's a little bit, ah, you know what, Ground to Sand's a little bit less uh, destructive. So let's do that. And then uh, let's use the Matter Eater. There we go. Nice and easy, we can just delete our whole testing area, you know, that's fine. But none of the charges are used and none of the healing bolts are used because the healing bolts are paired with the wand refresh. And so the reason that this wand is getting fixed so well is because of the chainsaw. If we put the chainsaw right here, it's going to fire slower. And likewise, if we move it up, it's going to fire slower. You need the chainsaw at the end to grab all the cast delay from this and from this. So at the end, the chainsaw is grabbing all that cast delay and it's throwing out the door. It's like, nope, I don't want you cast delay. And then uh, obviously the wand refresh is fixing it by 0.42. So um, the mana on this is a bit, bit exaggerated. <laughs> so you won't ever find a wand with this much mana, but you can make it work if you just had manas on there and you did a build similar to this. And I always do, ooh, let me pick that back up. I always carry around, uh, like I, I carry around a black hole, I carry around a matter eater, ground to sand, and I, I have them interchangeable. So if I'm like, oh, I need to dig through something, uh, I'll swap out for my uh, either uh, matter eater or black hole. And then I can just dig through it or it's like, oh, you know what? I, I have like a circle of vigor here, then I need to heal, oh, fire it at the ground, heal up, there you go, easy peasy. Um, you can also just throw it on the beginning, uh, it makes it a little bit less um, like uh, uh, quick. Uh, let's actually remove the gamma to make sure that it's not messing with it and grabbing the wand refresh. Oop, there we go. Uh, Likewise, since I, I paired it to the chainsaw, it's not adding all that cast delay, but if I move it, then it fires suddenly slower. So, yeah! And the finale wand is a bit of a weird one, uh, but how this reads is octuple, casting piercing, orbiting, speed up, divide by 10 on this gamma to create 10 meteors. So I do have extras up here. We're gonna cast 10 just for now. Um, the reason that I have extras up here is because when you're dividing, divides are, or sorry, divide by 10s are super strange and they'll use charges regardless. I haven't entirely figured out why, but it's something to keep in mind. All right, and since this is our finale wand, it's gonna be extravagant as always. Okay, you know what? I think we need 10 more. By that, I mean 100, because it's dividing 10. I could feel my poor computer panicking. And something neat about Meteor is it will destroy terrain, so 
If we fire it down here, ooh, this one was nice and pink. I like it. It's exploding explosion radius creates like a black or not a black hole, like a uh, a nuclear explosion. Uh, it doesn't look like it breaks anything below it, but if we were to fire it right here, oh, well, hmm, oops, there we go. It makes everything crumble. It's super neat. All right, well, hopefully you learned something and hopefully you can make spells unlimited. And uh, as always, have a wonderful evening, noon, and night, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.